Okay, so I'm going to explain you uh, the basis of how to present uh, uh, the how to present the teachings, how to present someone what he's going to learn when he comes to a meditation course, and how to structure uh, a way that you can teach the techniques, the meditation techniques, the different meditation techniques that were taught by Guru Raj, and the different teachings about the different concepts that uh, Guru Raj taught in a program which is a program that in order to do it in a, in a very uh, a complete way would be a 13, 30 hours program. Okay? So you understand me well? Good, perfect. So the starting point is the concept of one day, really. And you already know this concept, of course, but I explain you basically how in this concept we are going to put together all the different concepts. Now, meditation is a discipline. So, meditation is a discipline, meditation and mindfulness. Uh, today, mindfulness is a word that is used a lot, uh, and it is used a lot because it has become popularized by John kabat and other authors from universities. Mindfulness refers to what is the general term of awareness or consciousness. In fact, it's a word that comes from the Sanskrit Smitri, or in Pali, is Sati, uh, which, uh, you know, uh, is the concept of that within yourself that becomes aware or that realizes things, you know, is the... So, it has been translated by this word, mindfulness. Guruji used to use the word awareness, or the word uh, wakefulness, but basically it's the same concept. So it is meditation and mindfulness, because we have meditation techniques and mindfulness techniques. Uh, it's the two things are part of the method of the system, of the discipline. So the discipline that we learn is a discipline that we apply in one day of our lives. And this is very important because meditation and mindfulness deals with the subjective experience that we have of existence. So we don't try to explain people uh, or your students what the objective world is all about. You know, the objective world is, you know, the mountains, the universe, the biology, the chemistry, the mathematics, the economics, you name it what is what we could call the objective world, but we deal with the subjective world, which means the experience of being alive, the experience of being a being, the experience of having an eye and feeling yourself as an eye, as an identity. So basically the subjective experience. And this subjective experience is something that is experienced one day after another. There is a kind of uh, uh, rhythm here, which is that you wake up in the mornings and you go to sleep at night. And basically one life is composed of one day after another day after another day after another day. The day when we look at a day and what happens in a day, taking any day of your life, so say you are born in this day, Okay, and you will die in this day. This we will put the end, the beginning and the end. Eh? So you wake up day after another, day after another, day after another. And each day in reality is like a life. Eh? Because the experience of being an I, of being in charge of your life, the experience of... Uh, 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 of everything that might worry you or that might concern you is something that you live 
while you are awake. Because when you are sleeping, you are not in charge somehow. You go to sleep and then nature, call it nature or call it God, is in charge. So you are not there anymore. Uh, in fact, if you appear uh, during the night many times, you don't sleep well. The best thing you can do is disappear completely, i.e. die, till you wake up the following day to live another day. When you wake up every morning, the first thing that happens is that you become aware or you become conscious of what we could call the memory back. So the memory back is all your memories, conscious or unconscious, that are there, so the things that you tell yourself about yourself, the things that you tell yourself about life, the memory you have of your circumstances, the interpretation you have of your circumstances, your desires, your cravings, your yearnings, uh, your wants, all these things wake up in the morning, you know, and you project them in the, in the screen of your mind. Mm? Within your memories, you have people, the people that are around you, and that are active, you know, in your memory that day. So you have people like A, B, your mother, your sister, your husband, your children, your friend, your boss. So you have people in your memories which are part of what you think reality is. Because every morning when you wake up without saying it, you assume that this is your reality, what you are projecting in the screen of your mind. Now, it's very easy to realize that this is not exactly real. To begin with, this that you project in the screen of your mind, nobody knows it. So it's not shared. Not even your husband, if you live with your husband, knows exactly what you are projecting in the screen of your mind that morning. Nobody knows it and nobody cares about it. Because everybody is worried about what they project in the screen of their own minds. It cannot be reality because it is not shared. I mean, for something to be real, let me put an example of something which is real, gravity. Gravity, which makes this fall, is the same here, in that corner of the universe, and it's the same for me and for you, so it's real, it's gravity. But this projection in your mind, it's not only unreal because nobody knows it and it is not shared and I wake up every morning to a completely different screen in my mind. Uh, it is not known. Uh, nobody cares about it. Uh, but it is not real not only for that because it changes from one day to another. From one day to another, you don't see the changes, like you don't see a baby grow, but it grows. I mean, it changes from one day to another. In other words, you wake up every day, and what woke up when you were 14 years old, and what woke up when you were... 15 years old, and what woke up when you were 25 years old, and what woke up when you were 35 years old, are completely different stories. So, really, this is, this is a reality that lasts in your mind for whatever, whatever reality this is, is a reality that exists within your mind, and that lasts the scope of one day. And this is where we are going to deal with the discipline of meditation and mindfulness and where, where we are going to apply the practical philosophy which is part of what we teach as, you know, teachers of the different meditation societies worldwide. Now, once you wake up in the mornings, basically what you do is you 
project this past, because this is a memory, these are memories, so this is a past, and you project this past towards a future. So when you wake up every morning, you have all these different desires, and you want this, and you want that, and you want to be there, or, you know, I, and you want company, and I want a husband, and I want a job, and I want a friend, and I want this, and I want that. So you make a projection of all the things that you consider that of your circumstances are wrong, and you try to make them right, projecting this past into a future. You've been doing this one day after another every day of your life. And this kind of projections that you've been doing one day of after another every day of your life have always been uh, not very accurate projections. In other words, when you woke up with 15 years old, you would wake up, you know, wanting to be with this group of people or being popular in school or you name it, whatever the case might be and and um, everything depended on, dependent, depended on that. You know, that was the very important thing. Today, you look at what woke up when you were 15 and you say, what a waste of time. Same thing if you look at what woke up at 25 years old, what a waste of time. In other words, this past projected into your future takes you away from the only place you can do something for you and for your loved ones, which is today. So one of the uh, main things we teach is to live here and now. To live and take care of the day you have to live from the moment you wake up in the morning to the moment you go to bed in its full, in its fullest. Also, we make the problem of sorting out your life, whichever the problem you are involved in, we, we, we reduce the problem of sorting out your life in the problem of sorting out your day. Everything happens in a day, and there is no other place you can do something for your life, or for your well-being, or, or for your psychical stability, or for you name it, but today that I have one day to live. Now one day since you wake up, the I, because here we are going to, during the, the course, the training course and the 30 hours training course that we are giving, we are using several concepts. We are using the concept of the I, and we are speaking about the little I, which is this, this mechanism that is a memory projected into a future. We are going to speak about the real I, which is whatever it is that you are in reality, because we have already, you know, mm, seen that this is not exactly real or has a very limited reality. It's, it's, it's so limited that is limited to this day and to your mind. It, it, it has no other reality beyond that. So it's not the real thing. Um, uh, so we are going to speak about the little eye. Another concept that we are going to use is consciousness. And we are going to use the concept of God. We will speak little by little of how we relate these two concepts together with the real eye and with the little eye. And we, uh, and the eye, which is because it is, we are dealing with the subjective experience, so the eye is part of the game. The eye, since you wake up in the morning where you are still in bed with your, uh, with your, head in the bed, uh, till you go to sleep and you fall completely asleep, during all day basically the eye is realizing actions, so since 
you start in the morning, you start moving your muscles. So you wake up and you get out of the bed, you go to the toilet, this, that, the other, you drink a tea. So you are acting 16 hours, because say you sleep 8 hours in total. So you will be performing action for 16 hours. Your mind will be thinking for 16 hours. So you will keep thinking things all the time. Since you wake up till you go to sleep, your mind is thinking all the time. Think th and you are feeling. You might feel bored, you might feel anxious, you might feel whatever, but the eye is performing actions, the eye is producing thoughts, and the eye is feeling itself somehow. You can feel happy or you can feel unhappy, but you are feeling yourselves. These are basically the three yogas. So this is karma yoga. Karma means action. This is jnana yoga. Jnana means discernment, discrimination. Uh, and that's what thought should be used for, to discriminate. In, in, uh, in, in a final uh, stance to discriminate between what is real and what is unreal, but basically to discriminate, although we, do, we use thought to judge, to be judgmental and judge other people and judge ourselves. But thought should be used to discriminate. Jnana means discrimination or discernment. So this is Jnana Yoga. And the feeling, the, the king of all feelings is love. So the source of all feelings is love. So this is Bhakti Yoga. So these are the, the three yogas. And then the fourth yoga, which is Raja Yoga, which is the meditation techniques, uh, the royal path is basically the meditation techniques that will develop within you certain um, qualities, certain uh, competences in your mind. For example, uh, to become one-pointed, to learn how to concentrate the mind, to develop uh, the visual mind and develop the visual visualization capabilities of the mind, uh, to develop the introspective competences of the mind, so to look inside yourself and, and be able to deep dive within yourself. All these competences of the mind are developed by Raja Yoga, which is the meditation techniques. And basically, in the discipline that we teach, you start the day with a first meditation and you end the day with a second meditation. And you apply certain practical philosophies to your actions, to your thoughts, and to your feelings. And this practical philosophy that you will apply to your actions, to your feelings, and to your thoughts is a practical philosophy that taught Guru Rashananda Yogi, which is in all the different satsangs explained in many different ways, but that uh, as a school, what we have done here in Spain is extract that information and put it into a comprehensive program. Okay, so this is understood? Good.
So I go to the next point. Anyhow, obviously, uh, I can explain this much better in my own language, <laughs> which is Spanish, but I do my best. <laughs> now, let us start a little bit in, uh, when we teach this, we want to teach it within the framework or the structure of what pe people teach today uh, around the world when they speak about meditation and mindfulness. So it's very important that when uh, you put together the course for the students, you can connect them with the different, you know, approaches that are given to meditation. Uh, uh, lately, lots of universities, particularly in the United States, from Stanford to MIT to Harvard to Yale to Wisconsin, you name it, they have departments dedicated not only to teach meditation, but to do research on meditation. So there's a lot of academic minds uh, thinking about meditation, and there is a, um, a, a, a very uh, good work done by Davidson, Lunds, and some other author, uh, which I will send you the reference by email, but basically that divides the different kind of meditation uh, techniques into three major areas, which are the concentration techniques, uh, the what they call open presence, techniques and what they call the non-referential loving kindness techniques. So we are going and uh, the student is going to learn and we are teaching the student uh, techniques uh, of each of these three major, you know, groups of techniques that exist uh, throughout the world. Concentration techniques are based on having an object where you put your attention and you use this object where you put your attention uh, to keep your attention uh, here and now, uh, being aware of the rest of the objects, but you keep the attention in that object to keep uh, the mind uh, fixed on that object so that the rest of ad objects that appear on your conscious mind, you just let them go. And we have uh, visual objects, auditive objects and sensory objects. Uh, we teach uh, a visual object technique, which is Tratak. We teach a uh, auditive object technique, which is Mantra. And we teach a sensory object technique which will be the, what it's called, anapana meditation or with your breathing. Mm? And pranayamas and the different pranayamas, etc. I will not get into detail of all the different techniques that we teach because, you know, this is all for teachers, so you know very well the different techniques that we teach but for you to understand that these are concentration techniques. We then teach open present techniques. Amongst the open presence techniques, open presence basically the word says it very clearly, is keep yourself present and open to the moment you are living. 
which will be related to what you are feeling, what you are thinking, and what you are doing at that very moment. Because during a day, you know, the three yogas, or the three things, actions, feelings, and thoughts, are running in parallel and defining the expression of your individuality that day. So, all the practical philosophy teachings that includes the practices of Auntie Matilda, uh, you know, which is, for example, if Auntie Matilda has given you a bad word that morning and you start Auntie Matilda, Auntie Matilda, Auntie Matilda, and you realize that you've been 15 minutes thinking badly about Auntie Matilda, well, you can spend the next 16 minutes thinking well about Auntie Matilda. In other words, you are applying certain practical philosophy, and you know in his satsangs, Guru Raj taught from how to shave to how to smoke a cigarette, including. So <laughs> you have hundreds of different techniques uh, that Guruji taught to uh, keep your presence in the day that you are living moment by moment without judging that moment, which is one of the definitions that is given these days about mindfulness. So here we have lots of techniques, and here, uh, you know, is where uh, m m we, we extract these techniques from the contents of the hundreds of satsangs that are there with these techniques explained. Uh, throughout this series of videos, because today I'm just doing a general introduction, I will go into detail of all the different practical philosophy techniques that we teach as part of the program that we run in Spain. Uh, and I will go into detail of how we teach Tratak and how we teach Mantra. Uh, obviously, we teach the Prep Mantra, the individual Mantra, the different techniques like Mandala, Prep Mandala, Advanced Mandala, etc., etc. So here, we can say that here, if we would be speaking ma market-wise, in a market-wise, from a market-wise approach, here we are very powerful because nobody has a set of techniques well designed uh, that deal with all these things in the way we have. You know, we have here hundreds of different techniques from yoga nidra to this, to that, to positive affirmation, you name it, we have uh, hundreds of techniques of open present techniques and Non-referential loving-kindness techniques. Well, here is where the scientists get the, get the game wrong because they are very wary about what has been always called devotional practices. Non-referential loving-kindness means all those practices that are there to kind of wake up your heart, wake up the feelings of your heart. Uh, it's uh, the, the gospel, going to a gospel, to, to speak to an American, no, going to a gospel is a devotional practice. Uh, singing to, lo to the Lord, mm, devoting yourself to the Lord, etc., uh, etc., et are devotional practices, which are, uh, you know, if you... If you excite your heart, you know, you come out. When you love someone, you tend to love everybody, no? When you are in love, if you can remember when you were in love, when you were young and you were innocently in, in love of someone and everybody looks good to you. In fact, you love ev everybody. So once you develop love to one object, it immediately expands to the rest of the object. Now, the academics, they use what they call the secure attachment, and the secure attachment is this, this, uh, 
this teacher that you had or this mentor or this coach or you name it that made you feel good, that made you feel a person and then you use that person to recall that feeling within yourself and then you wish that that feeling is for yourself and for everybody. They call this the meta meditation. But basically what is the essence of these techniques is learning to love God. The secure, the most secure of all attachments is God. And you don't need to believe in God because you can invent God if you don't believe in one. You can make up a God. Like the Hindus, they make up a God <laughs> easily. <laughs> uh, I will get into detail of how we teach Guru Shakti, which is basically uh, the non-referential loving kindness technique that we teach, which is very, very important, and that in fact makes the 60% of what is needed to make this discipline do its work. Okay? So, now to teach, uh, to teach this, uh, we have, you know, divided the curriculum of teaching. At the end of the day, we are a uh, Meditation teachers organization, we train teachers so that these teachers can teach meditation. Meditation is something that has to be taught per to person to person. The human touch has to be there. And in order to uh, reach society teaching meditation, you have to have lots of teachers because it is impossible to teach meditation, say, in an auditorium to 500 people. You can give a lecture, maybe, but you cannot teach meditation. Teaching meditation requires the, the nearness, to be near the other person. For example, in Spain, we teach in, 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 in the ashrams, which are like big homes where people stay, uh, to sleep and, you know, live with you and they learn with you and eat with you, etc., etc. We have two ashrams in Spain. This one from where I am speaking and another one in Tarragona <laughs> that was opened recently. Uh, so, um, as we are a, a teacher's organization, we have a program to train a teacher. And this program is made up of basically uh, the P, P modules, which are P01, P02, and P03. P stands for preparatory. Each of these modules is a 30 hours course. And uh, the P01 is where everybody starts, many people, probably, uh, just with the P01, uh, they really uh, don't need anything more, because they are going to learn Tratak, they are going to learn the preparatory mantra, they are going to learn the practical philosophy. They are going to learn the different concepts that we teach. I will get into the concepts that we teach little by little. Uh, uh, but that's it. They have tools enough uh, to continue. And, you know, they have better tools and better knowledge than they can get if they go to a 24-hour course of the MBSR a program from mindfulness from John Kabat-Zinn. So they get better information, more powerful techniques, and uh, and, um, and and everything they get there plus more things. In other words, so for many people it's more than enough. But if you want to become a teacher, you will have to do the P02 and the P03. I will get in a moment in what they are. Then we have the C modules, we have the C01, C11, 
C02, C03. C stands for complementary techniques. Now, these are the individualized techniques. We could change the C for I, I01, individualized techniques. Yeah, I'll, I'm, it is something that I'm going to change it on the go. We've been calling it C up to now, but I'm going to I for individual. And this is the mantra, the individual mantra. This is the individual mantra is the same, but you can get the mantra uh, you know, by coming to a retreat to the ashram, and then it's a C and I 11, or you can get the mantra uh, because I give the mantra to a teacher, say in Madrid, and then uh, he teaches you in Madrid, but you know, in one afternoon. So if you come a whole weekend to get your mantra, it's an I 11, and you have more credits because all these courses give you credits, you know. Uh, I don't remember by memory, but say this is 10 credits or whatever the case might be. So if you have your individual mantra, I01, say it's five credits, but if you do it in a retreat, it is 10 credits, no? Something like that. This is the preparatory mandala, and this is the advanced mandala. Then you have the R modules. And you have the R01, R02, and R03. R starts for retreat. So in order to become a teacher, you have to come to a first retreat, which is the R01. And this is the international, the May, May retreat. You have to come where you are initiated as prep teacher, and you have to come to another one where you are initiated as full teacher, the R02. And you have to come to a retreat in, today we only do it in this ashram in Asturias, which is a 10-day retreat, where is a special retreat for teachers where I not only guide the teachers through the corpse or the framework of the teachings of Guru Raj, but I guide the teachers also so that they understand the framework of all the rest of teachings and spiritual traditions. Like non-duality and Advaita, or the Buddhist traditions, or the Taoist traditions, the Christian tradition, so in this 10-day retreat, I give a full overview of how the same things we teach are mm, taught by others and, you know, what, what are the, you know, particular characteristics that we have in what we teach, but we kind of, uh, you know, embrace uh, every teaching, every quality teaching. So... Mm, this is a school, you know, mm, a quality school uh, uh, as uh, we are, you know, enriches itself by quality uh, books, you know. I mean, so for example, um, I don't know, speaking Ramana Maharshi, which is a non-dual non or Advaita master from, I don't know if you know Ramana Maharshi, but uh, from uh, Arunachala, well, uh, the teachings he gave, you know, we embrace because they are perfectly compatible and do not uh, deny nothing of what we teach. They enrich what we teach, although we, in many instances, go a step beyond of what uh, is being taught today and has been taught during the 20th century, particularly, which is when many, many uh, spiritual teachers have been acting. But we integrate both in the P01 program for students and to the training we give to teachers so that they are well acquainted with, you know, the MBSR protocol, the MBCT protocol, for example, of the universities, 
the different Buddhist traditions and how they teach the Four Noble Truths, the Octuple, uh, the Eightfold Path, etc., etc. And that's the R modules. So we have the P modules, the I modules, the R modules, and the other, ah, and then we have the 100 hours of practices, which is that once you become a prep teacher, you have to, you know, do 100 hours of practices, which you do for free, you do as voluntary work. We mm, try to look for things that are social, for example, could be schools, could be prisons, could be uh, victims of uh, gender violence, could be something that you can do something for others, and that you, you give these prep courses, you know, monitored by your teacher, uh, so that after you've been doing these 100 hour practices and you have your prep mandala and your advanced mandala and your mantra and you have done the PO1, the PO2, the PO3, you become a full teacher and the RO3 with the 10 days you become a full teacher. So R, in fact RO2, this RO3 is the other way around. I suppose it is understood for... <laughs> for No, the PO1, PO2, and PO3, you can do them one after the other. Oh, okay. The 100 hours, you have to do them uh, after you become initiated as prep teacher, after the retreat of one, you become a prep teacher, and then you do the 100 hours, and in the next retreat you go, you become a full teacher. Okay. So this is a little bit the program that we do to teach teachers. And what uh, we, we teach under this framework of the day and what I will be doing in the following videos that I will be producing and sending to you is go into detail of how we do the PO1 program. Uh, this will take me at least six or seven videos, so it's not going to be today. <laughs> But this is just an introduction uh, to tell you that I'm going to do this throughout the following uh, weeks so that I can provide you with uh, what we are teaching, how we are teaching, what is the calendar, what's the documents we prepare both to the students and to the teachers that have to teach the different programs so that uh, you know uh, you can take advantage of our experience doing this for a lot of years now uh, and so that we can exchange ideas and enrich each other in this uh, intellectual transaction. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> Hope you have a nice day. And I will keep sending these videos to all of you uh, in the following weeks.